From the abandoned Nazi brainwashing camp to a generator that can summon a bolt of lightning, here are 10 most mysterious abandoned places in Europe. But first, thanks LordHood117 for leaving us this comment on our Strangest Photos of Airplanes video. Let us know if there's any creepy abandoned places you've explored in the comment section and maybe we'll feature you in an upcoming video. Number 10. Orador sur Glan Orador sur Glan was a small French city near Limoges that was destroyed during World War II. During the D-Day invasion of Normandy, an armored panzer division was ordered to head north to stop the Allied assault. A group of French resistance was stationed at this city and tried their best to intercept the counterattack. They put up a good fight, but it clearly wasn't good enough. The Germans also believed that one of their commanders was being held hostage in this town, and in exchange for 30 civilians of the town being held hostage, they wanted their commander back. But something didn't quite go right during this negotiation and the entire city was razed. The French thought about rebuilding the city, but Charles de Gaulle didn't want to. He preferred that the ruins of the town be left the way it was to show how brutal the Germans were on this day. A village located near the ruins would be built after World War II, which would be homes to workers at museums and to host travelers wanting to see the wreckage, which is now basically a memorial. Deciding to leave this village like this and not rebuilding it was a decision that would prove some physical evidence to unnecessary destruction that occurred. To this day, burnt cars and skeletons of buildings are still in clear view as a relic to the past. Number 9. Poggio Reale Often what makes Italy so beautiful is also what can cause natural disasters. Italy's volcanoes and active fault lines create picturesque hills, fertile soil, and remarkable coastlines. The city of Poggio Reale, that specialized in producing fruit and other agricultural products, was hit by an earthquake in 1968, and it would never be the same ever since this day. This town in Sicily was simply overwhelmed with the destruction and could not simply be rebuilt. The mayor of the town had made great plans to bring it back to its former glory and create new installations to make it better than it once was. However, it turned out to be too economically draining to completely repair the torn up city, so the project and the city were left abandoned. The mayor didn't have the proper people he needed to construct the artwork and parks he was looking for, so it remains a ghost town. Plains of grass now grow where cars once were parked, and this should serve as a reminder of how quickly Mother Earth can reclaim her territory if she wants to. Number 8. Silame, Estonia this place hasn't gone completely abandoned just yet, but it's beginning to look a lot like the Estonian version of Detroit. Not only is it nearly abandoned, it's also extremely toxic as well. This was built back during the Soviet Union times when Stalin was searching for uranium to use in fuel for nuclear reactors. Uranium processing was the city's main source of income until the Soviet Union began to fall and Estonia had reclaimed their independence. After the fall of the Soviet Union, the people living there no longer had an employer and there was basically no way to continue funding the uranium processing plants here. It also became the world's leading producer of rare and strange metals such as niobium and tantalum. Anyways, pretty much every photo ever taken of this place in modern times will show you there's barely anyone that lives here anymore. Many claim that this city still has the best preserved Stalinistic architecture and you can imagine it was quite nice living here during its heyday. It still even looks like a model city, but just no one is there. 85% of the inhabitants were Russian, and many felt that this city was established for the Russians to control the surrounding economical areas. Number 7. Mark's Generator Hidden within a forest near Moscow is a strange abandoned machine that might cause some confusion if you stumbled upon it. This massive configuration of tubes and coils is what's known as the Marks Generator, and it's a shockingly powerful machine. This strange device is capable of generating lightning bolts. At its peak performance, it was able to generate a discharge of lightning equal to all the power generators in Russia, but for only a fraction of a second. It could create a bolt of lightning over 100 feet high. Why would the Soviets build such a powerful electrical device? This was to test how planes and other equipment would hold up during lightning strikes or to see how they would react against electromagnetic pulse. The testing facility has been put to use even after Soviet times to see how it would work against new Sukhoi aircraft. The US had constructed a similar electronic pulse simulator for the same reasons, but it looks completely different. Number 6. The Monsell Sea Forts Protecting themselves against the advancing German Navy and Air Force, the British certainly had a difficult task on their hands. 
The Germans had definitely developed submarines and aircraft at a surprisingly fast rate, and fortifying the waters around England was necessary. However, they did have the advantage of being completely surrounded by water. So they knew the Germans would either have to come from the air or from the sea. The Monsell Sea Forts were built in 1942 and consist of seven different towers. The idea was to provide anti-aircraft protection against the German Luftwaffe, submarines, and ships. The strategic location was needed to be fortified in order to protect London from being bombarded and possibly to keep the Nazi warboats from cruising down the Thames River. These were decommissioned in the late 1950s, leaving them abandoned and rusting. This was certainly a unique idea at the time, and much materials were needed to complete this difficult project, with some structures reaching over 60 feet or 18 meters below the surface of the water. Each tower was equipped with 3.75-inch anti-aircraft guns and two 40-millimeter Beaufort's anti-aircraft guns. It's debatable how effective they were since they only destroyed one German e-boat, but it could have certainly made it more difficult for the Germans to plan a raid on London. Today, they still sit outside the entrance to the Thames River. Number 5. Prora The Germans knew that in order to secure a stronghold over Europe, they needed to invest a little extra money in propaganda and spreading their ideology the best they could. In order to complete this goal, a huge brainwashing camp was installed on the coast of the Baltic Sea in northern Germany. It was almost like a resort for the Third Reich, where they could show off their power and the natural beauty of Germanic lands to secure loyalty to the cause. This place housed a cinema, swimming pools, theaters, and more. Construction began in 1939 and it was a remarkable structure meant to last for centuries. Made out of concrete, this was quite a revolutionary settlement at the time and many SS recruits were overwhelmed by its striking appearance. Basically, the statement was, look at what we're capable of, look at what we can achieve, and look at how beautiful Germany is. All this was to install patriotism and national pride. Recruits would go through rigorous classes, learning about German history and other propaganda. Once they had finally did their time, they were ready to be part of the SS. The structures themselves were actually built so well that in modern times, people are turning them into luxury apartments despite the shady past. Number 4. Tito's Underground Air Force Base this formerly secret air force base operated under the Yugoslavian government and is located between the Bosnian and Croatian border. It's also one of the largest underground bases in Europe that we know about. Construction on this massive project began in 1948 all the way till 1968 and it cost the reported $6 billion, making it also one of the most expensive military bases ever in Europe. This base was built to be sturdy enough to withstand a 20 kiloton nuclear bomb, deploy radar detection systems, and also as a secret underground airbase to store all kinds of planes, tanks, bombs, etc. This was used to the max in the early 1990s during the Yugoslav Wars. However, it was also discovered and bombed eventually. The base was abandoned at the end of the war, but not by everyone. The tunnel systems were used by drug smugglers and organ traffickers to get cargo from Bosnia to Serbia and vice versa. It suggested that anyone crazy enough to indulge in some urbex here should be careful enough about stepping on landmines. This photo here shows two tunnels where airplanes or personnel could get in and out of the complex. Other entrances are a little bit more hidden or secretive, but you can certainly find some. There's also a bunch of jagged metal laying around, and if you don't have a good flashlight, it looks like you could really hurt yourself or easily get lost. Enter at your own risk. Number 3. Palace Hotel, Croatia You certainly won't be checking into the Palace Hotel Resort on the Adriatic island of Kirk anytime soon because it's closed, permanently. In the 1990s, Croatia, or Yugoslavia at that time, had its own beautiful resorts and a luxurious resort was built on the island of Kirk. The hotel is named after a nearby beach and was certainly a hotspot for the rich and famous to live it up and for a cheaper price that many destinations in Europe didn't have. This was founded by the founder of Penthouse, Bob Guccione, in 1972 and in close proximity to a casino. It was a great place for Europeans of all countries to party, drink champagne, indulge in caviar. It was also known for its provocative women, lavish parties, and long nights of drinking and gambling. It was all fun and games until the war broke out. Here in this photo, you see the deserted Palace Hotel pool that was once a great gathering place for tourists. While the hotel catered to the extremely wealthy quite well, the middle class citizens didn't spend nearly as much time as they were expecting, causing them to close their doors as well. Number 2. A625 Road this road was constructed as an important link between cities during the Industrial Age in the UK around 1819. 
This connects Derbyshire with the Peak District, and it was also important to connect Derbyshire to the rest of the country, especially because there was a large amount of coal mines in the area. This is why the road was built, but what would make such a useful road throughout the country go completely abandoned? It basically all came down to geology, and it really didn't matter how much they wanted the road here. There were massive landslides that destroyed a good portion of the road. It was built on unstable shale rock and sedimentary rock that couldn't withstand the pressure of Earth's movements or other natural factors. In 1974, the project was abandoned. In many locations, the road is cracked and left in shambles. You definitely would not want to try off-roading on this street. And before we get to number one, thanks Watt Blitz for letting us know in our 25 craziest laws in the US video why it's legal to shoot hogs from helicopters in Texas. We were kind of wondering about that. Duga Radar Installation The Duga Radar Installation in the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone is an abandoned Soviet military project that is just completely massive. This was constructed in order to detect enemy aircraft missiles or other objects that were about to fly into Russia. The radio waves this thing was able to give off would lead to mysterious noises being heard on shortwave radios. This would give it the name of the woodpecker because of the tapping noise it would pick up. Several countries complained about it, but they had no idea where the sound was coming from. The extreme height of the radar system would allow it to pick up intel as far away as the United Kingdom. Some believe that the massive amount of electricity needed to power this thing was what caused the infamous meltdown that led to the entire area becoming abandoned. Today, it pretty much stands in a contaminated area as a monument of paranoia during the Cold War. Any suggestions on future videos? Leave us your idea in the comments section, and maybe we'll feature it in an upcoming video.